Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey, and subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, the Week 8 XFL games in the 2023 season are coming up, and I'm going to go over every single game and see which XFL teams I think will win this week. Now, you have the Vegas Vipers traveling on the road to the St. Louis Battlehawks. This should be a solid game because the Vegas Vipers, although they are only 2-5, and five, last week they beat the San Antonio Brown. 26 to 12, and they have a new starting quarterback now that they've shipped off Louis Perez to the Arlington Renegades, and Brett Hundley is the backup quarterback. Now, Jalen McClendon got his first start of the season for the Vegas Vipers. He threw for 264 yards and two touchdowns. He played really solid football, and Vegas looked inspired on both sides of the ball. Now, granted, that was on their own field, but it does inspire confidence that Vegas maybe is starting to turn a corner and will start playing better football as the rest of the season goes along. And St. Louis, they're five and two, and they're having a great great season this year. They only have two losses to the D.C. defenders, so that's a really good sign for St. Louis that they can beat every single team besides D.C. in the XFL, and maybe they can continue that streak against the Vegas Vipers. This game is at home for the St. Louis Battlehawks as well, which I think really helps out their cause. And last week, they beat the Houston Roughnecks 24-15, which was a big win for St. Louis. And A.J. McCarron, he's been one of the top quarterbacks in the XFL this season. He threw for 222 yards and three touchdowns. I think that he'll have a really good game against the the Vegas Vipers as well. Even though the Vipers did play better defense against San Antonio, I do think that the Vipers still need work on that side of the ball. Maybe if they play as inspired as they did last week, that maybe will give the Vipers a chance to upset the St. Louis Battlehawks. But again, the Battlehawks have been consistent against every team that's not D.C. this season in the XFL. A.J. McCarron is playing solid football, and I do think Jalen McClendon will have a really good game again for the Vegas Vipers, but I'm going to go with the St. Louis Battlehawks to beat the Vegas Vipers 31-17. to I think that the Vegas Vegas Vipers will make it an interesting game, but St. Louis will find a way to win in the end. Now, our next game is actually a really solid game between the Arlington Renegades and the Orlando Guardians. Orlando, they've been the laughing stock of the XFL this season. They were previously winless, but they got a huge win last week over the D.C. Defenders, who were previously unbeaten. So now there's no unbeaten teams or winless teams left in the XFL. That was a huge win for the Orlando Guardians. But the Arlington Renegades are coming to town for the Orlando Guardians, and Arlington, they have Louis Perez now, but he did not play last week for Arlington. He might be able to play this week, but he could still be inactive, so who knows there. And in last week's 24-15 loss to the Seattle Sea Dragons, quarterback Drew Plitt had 213 yards and an interception, and Sal Canel did have four receptions for 64 yards. Sal Canel is a really solid tight end, but I do think that Drew Plitt, if he is the starting quarterback in this game, it will really be tough for Arlington to get the win because he's been solid this year, but he doesn't provide a lot of upside and he doesn't get a lot of touchdowns in a lot of games and he has some interception issues as well. I do think if Louis Perez is the quarterback, it could help out Arlington, but he hasn't played in a couple weeks and he'll have to be adjusting to a new offense, so he might not make it better for Arlington either. So either way, Arlington's going to have a tough time in this game because Orlando just got got the biggest win of the XFL season for almost any team. Beating the D.C. defenders, that was huge. I think that Orlando beating D.C. might help them turn a corner. Yes, they're not going to be eligible for the XFL playoffs, but I do think the Orlando Guardians are going to start playing harder now that they've got Quentin Dormady at quarterback. He threw for 328 yards and three touchdowns against the D.C. defenders. He's starting to play really good football after almost getting kicked out of the league for an alleged claim that he gave away the playbook of the Orlando Guardians. But he's back on the team. He's playing really good football now. And Cody Latimer, 93 yards receiving in a touchdown. He's a really good tight end. One of the best players in the XFL. And he leads the XFL in receiving yards. So he's a really good player. This game is at Orlando as well. I think that's really going to help out the Guardians. So I think this will be a really close game that goes down to the wire. But I will go with the Orlando Guardians to beat the Orlando and Renegades 24-17. I think the Guardians are going to get a win streak going and win their second game in a row. I think Arlington will keep it close, but their quarterback situation is kind of in bad shape right now, and I think the Orlando Guardians will find a way to win. Now, our next game, we have the Houston Roughnecks traveling on the road to the San Antonio Brahmas. The Houston Roughnecks, they're 4-3 and three right now, and they've lost three games in a row. They're starting to trend in the wrong direction. They lost to the Seattle Sea Dragons on the road. Then they lost to the D.C. Defenders, which was a tough loss, but D.C. was previously undefeated. 
But then they lost last week to the St. Louis Battlehawks, 24 to 15 on their own field. Cole McDonald, he had to play at quarterback, and he threw for 106 yards, a touchdown, and one interception. He really struggled in that game last week. And overall, if Brandon Silvers is not able to come back, he's on the injury list right now. And then I think that Houston could have some quarterback problems because Cole McDonald is a solid quarterback, but he did not play well last week. He looked really rattled trying to run the offense. So it will be interesting to see how he does against San Antonio or if Brandon Silvers will be able to come back off his injury and be able to play as well. I think either way, Houston's kind of in a situation like Arlington right now with their quarterback situations in flux, and they just don't have things going in the right direction right now. But Houston does have a solid defense, and San Antonio on the offensive end has really struggled this year. They just lost to the Vegas Vipers 26-12. to They only put up 12 points last week, and they have quarterback issues of their own because Kurt Benkert threw for 179 yards, one touchdown, and one interception last week for the Brahmas, but now he's out for the season with a broken rib cage. That is a tough loss for the Brahmas, even though he didn't play his best game last week. In his first start, possibly he could have had some promise, but now he's out for the year. Jack Cohn was out last week, but he should be back. He will be playing for the Brahmas this week as the starting quarterback and the Brahmas have added Paxton Lynch as well from the Orlando Guardians so a lot of roster movement there at the quarterback position. Jack Cohn's really struggled but if he can have a better game you never know they might be able to beat the Houston Roughnecks because Houston's really struggling they've lost three in a row and they have some quarterback problems as well. Cole McDonald has not played well in his first start and I think that overall San Antonio could get this win but if they didn't have so many issues with their quarterback position as well I'd have much more confidence in picking them and this game is at San Antonio but I'm going to go with the Houston Roughnecks to turn it around and stop the three-game losing streak and beat the San Antonio Brahms 21-17. I think this should be a really close, low-scoring game with both teams struggling right now, but I think Houston will find a way to pull out the win. And for the last game of the Week 8 XFL slate, you've got the game of the week. The previously undefeated D.C. defenders that are now 6-1 and one after their loss to the Orlando Guardians are traveling on the road to the Seattle Sea Dragons, where Seattle is really tough to beat when they're on their own field. They're 5-2 and two this season, and D.C., again, they lost last week to the Orlando Guardians in a shocker, 37-36. D.C.'s defense has been really solid this year, but they could not stop the Guardians. Jordan Tayamu had 285 yards and three touchdowns for D.C. He had a really solid game, but overall for Jordan Tayamu, it's about consistency. you got to play well game in and game out, and it was not his fault for why the D.C. defenders lost to Orlando, but he has had some games where he's been a little sketchy earlier on the year, but he's been playing better, but now D.C.'s going to have to get their defense back on track. If they have another defensive performance like they did against Orlando. They will not beat the Seattle Sea Dragons, but Abram Smith, he also had 127 yards and a touchdown, and you always can't forget about De'Eric King, who can come in and make some really good plays as well at the quarterback position for D.C. So their offense is a well-oiled machine, but I do think the defenders have some concerns on the defensive end right now, and Seattle's not the team you want to struggle on the defensive end against. Seattle beat the Arlington Renegades 24-15 last week, and Ben DiNucci had 266 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, and nine carries for 52 yards. Yes, he's a turnover machine, but Ben DiNucci Nucci leads the XFL in passing yards and overall he's a pretty good quarterback even though he does make a lot of mistakes with fumbles and picks but when the Seattle offense is humming getting the ball to Josh Gordon and a lot of their other playmakers as well then Seattle is a really good football team and this game's at Seattle they have a really good home crowd Seattle's won five in a row so it's the inverse of the Houston Roughnecks who've lost three in a row Seattle's won five in a row after starting 0-2 so the Sea Dragons are one of the hottest teams in the XFL DC just lost to the Orlando Guardians this will be a huge game for them to get back on track but I I'm actually going to go with the Seattle Sea Dragons to beat the D.C. Defenders 28-24. I think this is going to be the game of the week in the XFL. It should be a really close game. Both teams are really solid. D.C. coming off that loss and Seattle having won five games in a row, but I think they're going to make it six and I think the Sea Dragons will find a way to beat the D.C. Defenders. So those are the week eight XFL games and those are my preview and predictions for each game. I got the St. Louis Battlehawks, the Orlando Guardians, the Houston Roughnecks, and the Seattle Sea Dragons all getting wins this week and it's going to be really interesting to see who wins these games and what happens down the stretch of the XFL season as we get closer to the playoffs and which teams actually do make the playoffs. Comment down below what you think about my picks for the Week 8 XFL games and which teams you think will win the Week 8 XFL games at the end of the day. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well and I will see you next time.